Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Jamie Newman made some news last week for opting out of his grad transfer season to Georgia. So we went back, took a peek at Wake Forest versus Boston College. Full game over on the Patreon community. This is a highlights, lowlights. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. You dig this channel and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications. If you want the long form stuff, get over to the Patreon community. If you want more information on RPOs, the best information on RPOs, hit the link in the description to the video. Now, this video, this video is a small sample size of a small sample size. And this is probably one of those videos where you, I personally was a little bit surprised on some of the things I was seeing. So don't let this one game influence your entire opinion of this player. I've only ever watched just this one game, watched a handful of wake plays for an RPO video earlier, but I don't watch a lot of wake forest. I've never watched Jamie Newman play in person live, anything like that. This is one game, one sample size, but let's dive into it. So the first play here is a third and 10, and we're going to throw a go to the bottom of the screen. Six man pressure, double mug, Nice throw, completion, massive third down conversion here. Lots of good stuff all the way around. I'll say the one thing I don't love about this scheme here, as far as just what's going on, don't love running four verticals with what I think is almost like a post up top. Maybe it was supposed to be a post corner that just doesn't get run, but to me, having that number three vertical run across the field like this is not the scheme we want to be in very often. The thing I do love about this is that I love this guy's on the line of scrimmage. When the number three is off the line of scrimmage, these safeties sometimes just don't believe that he's going to be a viable vertical threat. Now, also, when you catch zero here, I I personally love to throw this ball to the number two just because it's a little bit easier of a throw. This is a massive throw. I will say I think this throw could potentially be a little bit better, and this is nitpicky, but when he gets – he gets, first of all, he gets pushed way too far outside – but then you'd love to throw him down the line. And really, it's not that line. It's outside the numbers. But when you push it to the sideline, you potentially, you still get a big gain. You just potentially don't get the touchdown, the yak after the catch. And so you can see that number three running across. Again, catch him in essentially zero here. But as far as the ball right there, that wide receiver is running down the line of the bottom of the numbers, stacked him, but the ball takes him, you know, almost out of bounds. Again, nitpicky for sure. Now, footwork-wise, this is going to be a theme the entire thing. We got double A-gap mug. You can see the left guard putting up his hand, communicating. They've got back issues in the protection the entire day. But watch Newman's footwork in the pocket. To me, this is unnecessarily difficult. Now, it's a, it's a nice throw from the pocket. You got someone right in your face. You got the back getting blown up in the face. But we talk a lot in this channel about dovetailing. And I'm not saying that it gets taught everywhere, although I'm a believer, is when you're going to throw to your left, you take your normal step, and then you kind of two, three this thing or shuffle so that when you go to throw, you're throwing over the center. You want to stay in the center area as much as possible. And really, you need to get a little bit of depth. If I'm throwing a go round, I'm taking three, tight hitch, and letting it go. Tight reset, whatever, letting it go. But I would love to, if I know I'm working left, to dovetail this way so when I go to hitch, I'm over the center and I'm not getting anybody blown up in my face, in my lap. And so, yeah, could the pass protection be better? Absolutely. But is it on the quarterback's footwork? To me, it is. Again, now right here, this might be a little less extreme than we'll see later in the video. But again, just give, us, give yourself a little bit of a dovetail to be lined up to throw to the left a little bit easier so then you don't have to jump way over there, get somebody in your lap. Again, nitpicky on that one. We'll see it as a theme as this video continues. So next one, this is first and 10, two by two. Again, they hit us with a little cross dog. We go to throw what I thought originally was a go route up, what a double move up top, but really this wide receiver up top just slows himself open. Watch the number one up top. He just kind of like changes his gait and blows by the corner. I mean, blow by him. And this is just, to me, a variation of four verticals. You catch closed here. So let's talk vision first. So you catch closed here. It looks like quarters, right? Everybody thinks it looks like quarters pre-snap. 
They're coming down from the heavens. We're trying to get back to the middle of the field. Now, if you love the matchup out here, great, take it. And I would too. This, he slows him open. I almost thought it was a double move originally. Wide open. The ball's underthrown. Still hits him in the chest. But if you're going to read this out, you probably want to try to get a potential two-on-one here if you don't love that outside go. For me, I think he falls off here. But again, we're getting right here. Two-on-one right here. This is a big hitter. Now, vision-wise, you take the matchup you like. If you like it on the outside, absolutely. But you got to let it go. To me, he almost looks like he like pumps here. That's why I originally thought it was a double move, that little pump. But again, the back is getting blown up in his face. You can't, it's really hard to play quarterback like that. But if you're just going to throw a go route on the outside, let's just watch the outside route up top. If you're throwing that route, one, two, three, let it go, you got to be able to get the ball off. It, I don't care what the pressure is, what the, what the pass protection is in front of you. If you take a three-step drop, tight hitch, and let it go, Now watch the back here. This is this is not what you want to do. Nice job tracking him, but then he just gets blown up. And the BC linebackers were made it a difficult day all the way around. Nice job picking up the pressure. But again, throwing to your left, I would love to see a dovetail. Let's see where he throws it from. Again, you know, he's he's over the left guard. You can see there's a, a form of a pocket there. Again, I almost want to just see if I can. Right over, he's he's lined up with that eagle face. Goes over the top. You can see he's off the eagle face. Now, that, that is an element of pocket technique, pocket mechanics. you got to give yourself a chance. This That is infuriating for an offense coordinator or play caller. That ball needs to, should be a touchdown. Now, we come out and do it again. This is the same matchup that they just tried to get the last time. Throw it up top. I'm guessing this is the same matchup. Again, underthrown. Hits him in the chest. The last one was a sack. This one's underthrown. Again, obviously they find the matchup they like. You know, I like the fact that he gave him a chance at least to go get the ball. I'd much rather have this than a long foul ball or overthrow. But again, the footwork from the pocket for me is not quite as clean as I would imagine for someone who's projected to go this high. So, Again, at least he gets it off this time. I still think he's throwing over the left guard. Just makes him really difficult when you get any sort of pressure. It's easy when there's a clean pocket. But you can see, I mean, it's pretty consistent. Ball's on the hash. He goes to throw this thing, you know, over the guard. That's why you dovetail right there. It's also underthrown. Still need to go up there and make a play. So next one, third and one. This is a little Q power. This is a heck of a run. It's a great job at the line of scrimmage. Running power to the left. Again, following the guard. Nice patience through the hole. But man, you would love, when he goes to switch his hands right here, I always think it's interesting when guys switch hands in the open field too, but switch hands right here, you'd love to see a burst. You know, he's got the lead of the 100 meters right here. Now he's gonna get caught by the entire defense. So it's one of those things where it's a great run initially, but I think I was hoping that it would be, you know, that that opportunity to finish that thing. Now, I don't know. These guys could be track stars on the BC defense for all I know. But the idea being that you would love to see, you know, for a guy who has the reputation for being able to run the rock, uh, the top end gear, you know, is, is not quite here. Right here, I mean, that guy is hawking him right there. Three of them. And then the bow out of bounds off, off the off ramp. Second and 10. Now, this one is one of those ones where you just, this, this is one of the ones where I think really exposes some of the concerns from the pocket. This is a hitch up top. So, not talking coverage wise here. You know, I'd be nervous throwing a hitch up top unless you knew for sure it was brackets with that flat defender potentially up top. But the footwork here to throw a hitch to the field is not it. And then the accuracy is definitely not it. So I'm looking for a one-step, no hitch, catch and throw. One-step, hitch, sky mail, hit the Gatorade. Okay, we'll watch it from the back end a handful of times here. Again, the, the fundamentals here make him late and make him spray, in my opinion. So again, catch, hitch, 
again, a lot, a lot of moving parts. You know, almost a heel click. To, to get a heel click on it, throwing a hitch is pretty difficult. One step right there. He's not lined up to throw a hitch to the right. He's lined up to throw to the tight end 23 right there. To get all the way lined up, that's a full heel click right there. Bouncing up and down, changing our levels. And that thing comes out like a single up the middle. You know, so for me, this all starts from the ground up. Not that this is something that's very fixable, very doable for sure. But there were some consistent misses in this game. Third and two. This is one of my one of my favorite throws of the game. This is just a stop up top. Nice, great timing. Good accuracy, nice conversion, especially on a third and two. Love seeing this call. This is a three no hitch throw. Now let's talk fundamentals here. This is not my favorite drop in the world. And what I mean by that is all three steps are kind of, the two and the three are underneath him. There's no depth, there's no rhythm. It's all just kind of bouncing where you're then going to crow hop into this. So I'm gonna really slow this down. So first step, good, perfect. Second step, almost equal to the first step and there's no depth there at all they're not you're barely crossing over third step is like a crow hop rounded everything is like tippy tappy everything happens right in the same watch where one two and three all happen within six inches of each other to me you know it's going to be really hard to be consistent when you're when you're dropping like this because there's no uh, rhythm there's no consistency of the stroke there's no it's it's tough to time out now it works here Again, he's also getting like a crow hop into it, like a mini crow hop, almost like a reverse dovetail. But it just doesn't look smooth. It doesn't look balanced. It looks all over the place. Again, that's pretty wide too for me as far as a base. But I do love the timing. I don't want to take away from the timing of this thing. This is Sunday timing with a Sunday coverage. Watch when he lets it go right there, separate. He goes to throw this thing. He's not out of it yet. That's a good anticipation. Great finish by the wide receiver too. But again, I think the footwork from the pocket uh, has got some potential for some significant improvement. Again, minus the pole here. You can see that kind of everything just kind of happens right underneath himself. You know, it's just uh, it's hard to be consistent when, you're, when your footwork is like that, even though you, you make it happen here on a big third and two. We're looking for consistency, being able to be smooth from the pocket. And here's the last one. We're sending that back, the number three, right down the middle of the field. And you just can't make this throw on many different levels. Watch it one more time here. Middle field open, classic beater. Now, I will say, scheme-wise here, uh, I, don't, I don't love this. And so what do I mean by that? First of all, they can't get lined up. Second of all, Scheme wise, when I'm trying to hit this, this back up the middle of the field, everyone's fa favorite seven on seven play. You you really, if this is the play, there's two things about it. You cannot get rerouted, meaning if you're the back, you cannot get collision by a linebacker. So once he puts his hands on you, it's a wrap essentially. So that's one dead element of it. The dead element that I really don't like design wise. That's more player execution wise. Design wise here. You can't come up here to me and run a hook or any type of non-vertical threatening, threatening route. Now, maybe it's supposed to be a vertical depending on what their rules are, where they pass it off, whatever. To me, I like to run this play with smash or with double corner to hold these safeties for sure. When you run a hook here, you really allow this safety to now feather off, especially if he feels like he's got that underneath coverage locked in, taking that curl hook area away so it allows him to feather this off so technically if i was making stats and i had the 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 kind of final rule as far as who gets charged with interceptions this is half quarterback half play caller play designer because when this guy feathers off he shouldn't be able to do that if he does that we should come out here and rip a corner for a touchdown so it's just one of those things where yeah it looks bad yes it's not the throw we want yes it's not a good decision but there's more to it than just that. So again,
see that number two down here, turn it down on a hook. Right there, he allows that safety to now get his eyes inside, work to number three, and go make a play. So, you know, it's just, these are the types of things that are that are frustrating for me when you're trying to evaluate a quarterback, especially someone who, you know, as you watch the film, wasn't necessarily living up to my expectations for what I had heard. And then to see plays like this, though, it's just, a, you know, also from the pocket, to me, Tozy bouncing around, again, tough to be consistent. I know he's got a reputation for having a lot of touch down the field. You know, too much right there. And it's just a bummer. From the back end, we can see the, the throw really. Again, can't get lined up. First sign of a disaster. And then we're going to read that thing right down the middle. But watch the back get collisioned. It's really hard right there. Now, you can't necessarily, you hope you can see it as a quarterback, but it's really hard to be successful on this route. Well, when you're getting collision and held at the same time, it doesn't mean you th throw it. Now, for me, when I, and we talk about this a lot on this channel, when when you go to make this throw, when he's got his back turned, the, deep, the defender has his back turned, you can throw that ball anywhere right here. Line drive. Now, can a running back catch that ball? I don't know. Even if this guy is over the top. But you can't just throw like a hand grenade out there and Hail Mary this thing up. You can put it right on him. This is a throw that many NFL people will make, especially in the red area, like the 5 or the 10. But again, you know, you, you got to be able to see this. You, you just have to. It's a, it's a tough vision thing for me. But again, the construction of the play is probably just as bad. So, Certainly not all great stuff, and uh, it was a little surprising for me. I'm probably going to go back and do another one, potentially on Jamie Newman as the season progresses, just to see kind of if the uh, evaluation balances out. But it's just one game. Uh, I think there were some definitely some elements that he's probably already been working on for a long time. But it's interesting for me to see kind of where people are making the projections for him, especially just with the with the move to Georgia, with the decide decision to opt out. I don't think it's necessarily that big of a deal by any means as far as the future of all these players but i do think it's interesting to go back and see where they were the last time they actually played tackle football so hopefully you enjoyed the video you want the full version get over to the patreon community i appreciate it and i will see you next time have a good one